The next piece of news we're going to dive into is one that's kind of a step down, depending on your perspective, and one that is definitely a step up. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is Transformers Deluxe Earthrise RC. She's been very anticipated. A lot of people were really excited about this. Oh my god, we're going to be getting another G1 RC. How is she going to look? Uh, the last time we that we really got... Uh, something of that continuity was the Hascon exclusive, which really was just a repaint and an homage to an old headmaster's idea. So this is something going back to form, especially in the wake of the recent news of the Masterpiece release, where everyone's like, oh, I'm not feeling the Masterpiece one. Maybe that Earthrise one will be more my budget, more my price point, and more the look. Well, I'll say this, robot mode looks very nice, but... I guess we really are seeing, more than anything with this, an example of what is the future of Transformers engineering and budget. I mean, I think I understand more than ever now because of this why they dropped the Generations name from this Earthrise and, the, uh, and all the Classics-esque kind of stuff moving forward. It's a different era. And that very first Generations RC, which really was the last RC toy, last toy of that Generations era before, you know, the Thrilling 30, before it started becoming Combiner Wars and Titan Masters and stuff like that. Titans Return, excuse me. So we see that in that stuff had to be done differently in order to fit the budget of today. And we have an RC here that looks really good in robot mode, but at a cost in that she has to have literally half of her car mode be a parts former. And they kind of play it up in the sense that, oh, it's her ski surfboard kind of mode. And it's like, oh, okay, sure. Um, again, if you throw that piece aside, she has a very nice robot mode, very well done, proportions are very good. Um, it's something that the original Titan, uh, original Titan, the original Generations run from 2014, which, you know, it's crazy when you think about it six years ago. Uh, it does just as a good a job, if not better, in that robot mode. Obviously, little things here and there that are kind of finicky. Uh, I find that the way the backpack is done is, is not as, I guess, flush as, let's say... Um, the original, I'll call it the Legends version, but the original Generations version. Uh, I'm not a fan of the pink feet. Uh, I know it's a little silly thing to pick on, but uh, I, I find it weird that they went with the pink feet, you know, going for, you know, so much of this is very uh, show accurate. And then we kind of have these pink feet. Maybe it's just the way the molding was done and the gang molding. Uh, but, it, all you know, I like her weapon. I like that she has a clear little weapon. She looks really good. She looks really good, but at the end of the day, you really are seeing just what the modern limits are of the deluxe in today's day and age, and we're not really going to see anything of that anymore. It's just there's just limits that are being hit, and we can't, you know, the parts, the paint, the engineering, it's just, you know, and short of them increasing the price point even more on a deluxe, we're not going to see that 2014 kind of thing anymore. And it's a shame. And I'll say this right now. If you're, you know, now seeing this, I really like this. And if you're willing to settle for this and it's going to stay in robot mode and you don't care too much about the transformation, that's fine. I mean, I love, if anyone's familiar with G Gyro Zetter. Gyro Zetter is another kind of Transformer-esque robot series. They do the same thing. They have these amazing robot modes, but what is the cost? Well, half the car, more than half the car, is part formed off of it and becomes a shield or some kind of weapon. And it just leads to these beautiful robot modes. But really, it's not really that much a transformation. It's so much a shell former. And in this case of RC, it's not even a shield. It's her. Hey, everyone remember when RC would have a hoverboard? No? Maybe it's uh, Daniel's, you know, influence on her as a headmaster made him want to have a hoverboard? I don't know. Um, again, robot mode looks great. You, you know, you isolate that alone, it looks great. But uh, from an engineering standpoint, it's it's giving us a clear indication of what the future is going to be for Transformers for a little bit, uh, just by how this is done. If you want to get your perfect uh, deluxe scale RC toy, uh, go to the Takara Legends line. Uh, back in, I think it was 2015 it was released. Uh, 
LG 10 Sakamoto Takara RC. Best paint job, uh, most, most, most show accurate paint job, most show, show I'm, I'm tongue twisted here, most show accurate uh, alt mode. Uh, and the design was done by Yuki Ashima of Kissplay, who I guess he really knows how to do engineering. And so it all worked out. Now, it's kind of a downer, but let's go to something that's not a downer. Let's talk about this Voyager Earthrise Skylinks. This guy looks amazing. I am very happy with what they've done here. They've taken the original toy that was, you know, already had a really cool concept with the, the motorized gimmick and the separating and, and all that, the sky and the links. Then they looked at what was done four years ago in 2016 with the Combiner Wars, with the Sky Rain Sky Links, and they said, how do we make that even better? And the limitations that the original release from the Combiner Wars one was, oh, hey, so, you know, it has the Combiner gimmick. That could be seen as a plus, as a bonus, but, at, you know, on the other side of it was, what was engineered out of it was, it couldn't separate from the bottom half to the top half. The bottom half, the Lynx half, couldn't separate from the top half, which is the, the sky part. You didn't have the Lynx part at all, really. If anything, the Lynx part was when you combined, you kind of had that Lynx face. Uh, for the combined mode. So I guess that's kind of how the story was written around that, if you want to, in, in a micro continuity, is that the Lynx part is present in the combiner mode of Sky Rain. Again, it was a great toy for what it was, and it was a very good Sky Lynx toy, but it still was missing a lot of what the original toy was known for in its gimmicks, in the way it was in the show, uh, especially in season three, how those two could separate, one could be used for another. And they somehow, on top of keeping all of that true, they also brought in a new twist on it that the Lynx mode could also turn into not just, like in the classic version, his booster rocket pack, but a launch station, playing more into the Earthrise, you know, build a city with ramps and all kinds of stuff. I love this. This is great. This is super the way it's done. Again, Sky looks amazing. Lynx looks amazing. The The fact that they engineered this whole base mode and stuff looks amazing. It, it just does a great job. I have nothing to complain about. And they still can combine. So you could have that combined mode, put it next to your old Sky Rain Combiner War Skylinks, and you could really see how so much has changed in just a, four, a, a short four years. And it's great. So we go from a RC that's kind of a, a bummer in some ways, unless you kind of really were just looking forward to that robot mode. Uh, but this Skylinks, there's nothing to complain about. They, they've taken everything that, is, that has come from an evolutionary standpoint from that old 1986 toy to that 2016 Combiner War toy and led to the next step, and he looks spectacular. And I have nothing more I could say but pure praise for the cocky air commander of Skylinks.